the Lord of the harvest. There are no doubts in our minds that we are in the final minutes before the rapture. Today more than ever the harvest is ready. Yet in the midst of this we need laborers. The Bible tells us in Matthew 9, 36-38, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad, as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Today it seems that those that don't identify themselves with the Bible and Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior have more compassion than those that claim to have it. It is a sad situation to see brothers and sisters in Christ that have spent many years together serving the Lord immediately become enemies because of their choices. This type of spirit must never be practiced in the church of God. There will be some that will come and go from the church, but our mindset should always be to pray for them. Though at times we will not like their decisions, we must have compassion on them. Compassion does not mean to let down the standards of the Word of God. The church of God must continue to have a sound and balanced message. We cannot lean too much to the left or to the right. We must rightly divide the Word of Truth. Now, having compassion also does not mean taking a humanistic approach to the doctrine that the church upholds. If we are to prepare to reach this world with the message of Christ and His church, we must preach and teach what the Word of God says. We must also remember that we are not lords over the membership of the church. I want to admonish you that we must remain as servants for those we serve. Being a leader does not mean that the people are there to serve you. You are there to serve the people. There is no better example for us than Jesus Christ when it comes to servanthood leadership. Just because one holds a bishop's license does not give him the license to act in any way he desires against God's children. Each leader will be held accountable to God on the day of judgment for our treatment of God's children. Christ spoke the following words which speak volumes to each of us today. Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 42 through 45. Now the words of Christ are clear when it comes to our calling as the leadership of the church in this hour. We are called to minister, and that means to give our all in everything we do for Christ and his church. This includes our attitudes, our behavior, and conversation within the church and outside of the church. We are ambassadors of Christ meaning we represent Him everywhere we go. The spirit of the leadership of the church today will be led by the Spirit of God. We must guard the beautiful church of God from the spirits that would like to bring division among us. We must guard the spirit of unity in order to prevail in the church today around the world. And last but not least, we must recognize who the Lord of the harvest is. That Lord is Jesus Christ and Him alone.